Welcome to Jesus Experience. You are designed to receive from God the life of His Son, Jesus Christ. And through the life of Christ in you, you will live and affect the world around you. This is Jesus Experience. And here we are, and we have one of the most special guests on the face of the earth with us right now. Man. Pastor Chris <laughs> is with us. All the way from River State, Nigeria, and we have Pastor Solomon from Benin. And Pastor Solomon is the leader of the IDP camp, a man that God has raised up to deliver countless thousands of children from the ravages of Boko Haram and the, the radical Islamic world that has tormented literally millions of people and displaced millions of people in Nigeria. Those of you that are on Periscope. We welcome you. We're excited you're with us tonight. We're going to take a journey into what can the Spirit of God do with my life if I would just obey Him. If I would just do what God says, how much effect can my life have on this earth? So let's cast all care upon the Lord and just open up our hearts to God. Father, we separate ourselves, every man, every woman, every child, Every situation, circumstance, we cast it over unto you. We take our care. We roll our care over unto you, God. You are our burden bearer. You are provision, and it shall be seen. You are made to us wisdom, so we know what to do next. You have opened the great treasures of your wisdom. You've made known to us the mystery of your will with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. God, you are awesome in our life, fulfilling the high call that you've ordained in our life. Father, bless this time and honor your name as we magnify the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, Pastor Solomon, we welcome you here to Delaware. We are just absolutely <laughs> blessed to have you. You know, many of you have heard the story of Pastor Solomon and his camp. In fact, this is a, uh, a picture of what the camp looks like. It's a, it's a, a rendering of it. It's, it's a two-scale model of a IDP, internally displaced persons camp, in Benin, Nigeria. And before we take a little subsection off to uh, Dr. Ron Godwin, who is bringing a tremendous ability to cause these young men and women to rise to a level of excellence that they've never known before. I'd like you to hear from Pastor Solomon mm. what the ravages and what the, the pain has been and what the grace has been that God has brought to these children. And before he does <coughs> that, I've got to read this scripture. Mm. It says in Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of our Lord, of God, to comfort all that mourn. And it says in verse 30, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And verse 4, And they who were the bruised, distraught, destroyed, and oppressed, bound in life, they shall build old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations, the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Pastor Solomon, that's what you're doing. God has anointed you to raise up a generation that has been in desolation for the inauguration as being kings and priests unto God. Yes. So what's that like in Nigeria in the middle of the woods where God has sent 2,400 orphans? Thank you, viewers. Thank you for having time to listen to us. Uh, I'm glad to be here and I want to thank you for the great work, the encouragement, the inspiration and all the wonderful things you are sending, the books, the food, the, the, the roofs, the, the toilets and oh, you've done so many things to keep this children alive. Mm -hmm. So I want to specially thank you 
and thank Pastor Chris for coming and ministering. Yeah, Pastor Chris. Yes. <laughs> ministering to the children, especially the widows who had a lot of hearts and pains. And, you know, he just threw his hands around their shoulder to comfort them and to minister to them. He never really knew what God used him to do. You just brought them out of trauma, out of bitterness, and they were able to forgive. And now they are really very happy. Praise uh, God. Yes. So what brought these children? You, uh, first of the all, the history was, yes. give us some history. Yes. Then we'll go into some of the present, into yes. the future, and you'll get yes. some, you've got yes. to stay tuned. Get, get on your iPad, Twitter, get on your Facebook, call your friends, call your enemies, call your neighbors, mm. get your family, get on Jesus Experience, Victory Experience, or on Periscope, and you've got to hear what's about to happen. Go ahead, brother. Thank you. Uh, it all started from my bed. You know, I was born in a family uh, of 13 children, and I was the only different child. I was so weak, uh, sickly, and the punching bag of everyone. Uh, my school days was horrible. I, I was uh, always lonely. I hated myself uh, because I, I was not that strong like others, and nobody believed in me. I was mocked at. So growing up, I had this feeling inside of me that, look, if one day I ever get well, if one day I ever will be able to be like other human beings, I will not live to see others suffer. But I was not saved. I was not born again. And but you had that thought. That yes. You would yes, be used in yes, some way yes, to lift the burden away yes, off of other people. Yes. Okay. And then one day a soldier walked to the village and everybody started running and said, oh, Maybe when I become a soldier, I can fight for others. Wow. And then <laughs> one day one of my uncles became a driver, and he would carry many things. And then as sickly as I was, I said, well, maybe one day I'll become a driver. I can use the truck to take people, uh, the car to take people to help and all that. And just like that. And then I grew up to a point of understanding the problem in South Africa, apartheid and all that. I said, well, Maybe I'll be a nuclear physicist. I will do a bit of chemical engineering. I'll do something just to be able to press a button and get suffering people out. And I was always imagining. But something hmm. came upon me, and that was a thought. When I'm alone, this thought comes. Where am I from? Why am I here? Where am I going? Why am I suffering? If I die now, where will I be? So this continued until I became paralyzed, and the doctor said they don't know what is wrong with me, but that I was going to die. The witch doctors told my parents that I, I was a, a, a problem child sent to them by the devil, and that they should let me die. There was no solution. So in the midst of all this confusion and problem, Jesus woke up to my bedside 1 a.m. on Saturday morning, um, on Saturday night, uh, between 12 midnight and 1 a.m., uh, I saw Jesus by my bedside on the cross and telling me that this I did for you. I sacrificed my life for you. If you will believe on me and repent from your sins, I will forgive your sins and heal you. I just cried out, Lord, I believe. And I didn't see him anymore. Suddenly, I saw myself at the gate of heaven. He showed me the beautiful heaven, took me to hell, and, and brought me back completely healed and asked me to go testify, go preach the gospel, that there are many people like you all over the world that are suffering the way you were. Tell them what I've done for you, and if you will do this, I'm going to do the same for them. Wow. So that was how it all started. And then when I did all and my... How old were you? I was about 19, 20. 19, 20 years old. Yes, yes. And then when I went through all the training, Bible training, study and everything, and I got ready, Everywhere I went, I was always seeing something in Africa. Children abandoned, orphans, abused, uh, neglected, children from broken homes. So in 1992, uh, while our ministry was growing, we were planting churches in jungles everywhere, I, I, it was in my heart to fulfill the scripture and the promise I made to the Lord. In the book of James, it said, pure religion is to care for the widows and the orphans. Yes. And then Jesus said, I was sick, you did not visit me. I was naked, you didn't clothe me. I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I, I looked at Christianity 
in terms of practicality, if, if you really believe in God, you must come down to help those who are unfortunate, who are not as fortunate as yourself. Right. So I felt that if I would not do this, then I'm not grateful to God for, for healing me, for rescuing me from fear. I lived all my life in fear. I had no joy. I had no peace. He gave me joy. He gave me peace. He gave me eternal life. And then he gave me the power of the Holy Ghost. Now I became strong, stronger than those I thought were stronger than me. Mm -hmm. And I could stand anywhere and proclaim the gospel. I felt I need to do more as I was preaching the gospel. So in 1992, we decided, okay, let's set up uh, a place called Home for the Needy. We can just pick these children, put them there, give them a home, shelter, food, and then education or some skill. When we just started in a little way, we just wanted to fulfill the scripture. We wanted to love our neighbor like ourselves. That was how we started. And we started with one, two, three, four children. And we experimented with that. We discovered they were even happy to sleep on the bare floor and okay. to go to school and eat. So, so you just took in a few children just, yes. just in where you lived. Yeah. So that was how it all started. And then in a short while, we had 100 children in a little room. From one little room, we grew to 700 children in 10 rented apartments. And these children were all attending private schools. It was becoming so expensive to pay. We were owing debts. They sent these children out of the school, and that gave birth to Christ-like school. We now establish a school that they can attend school free, and then when we get donations, we can pay the teachers. So that was how it was. All. I mean, it was. We thought this is where it's going to end. This is it. Yeah. 700 children. God blessed us. We're getting so, breakthroughs, right? So some of them grew. They went to the university. Some have become graduates. Some have become lawyers. We're so happy. We do, we're celebrating that. That what God has used us to make life meaningful for the, these unfortunate ones. Was that the time that you, you, you got that land? Yes. And how we got to get the land was when we discovered that the owners of the houses they didn't like the children. Mm. Sometimes they abuse the children. They say, oh, we didn't build our house for you. Our toilets are getting filled up. Go look for your parents. You know, they were bringing the children back to where we were taking them from. Wow. So we started to pray, and God gave us this land, mm. 40 hectares. Wow. 40 hectares. Yes. Praise God. Just, just how, many, how many acres are in a hectare? <laughs> <laughs> You gotta I'm Google it. Google it. <laughs> Somebody send Somebody it quickly. Many, <laughs> Tell us how many acres are in a hectare. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, late 2012, we started getting phone calls from our friends, missionary friends. 2012. Yes, mm -hmm. around November, December 2012, uh, till January 2013, we started getting phone calls. Sometimes late at night, uh, from our friends. Uh, in Boronu State, Adamawa State, telling us that Boko Haram, this terrorist Islamic organization. Yeah, this is up in the north of Nigeria. Yes. Nigeria is basically broken into two yes. segments. The southern part is predominantly Christian. The northern part is Islamic, but at some of the reaches areas yes. is where the terrorism is. Being. Yes, yes. And that they are bombing their churches, taking their wives from them, raping their mothers you know, cutting the heads of their parents, pastors, the deacons, deaconesses, wow. church elders, and their children are just scattered. You know, we, we didn't know what to do other than to pray. And we no. pray. 2.4. Yeah. 2.4. 2. 2. 4. Okay. Yes. 2.4 <laughs> acres per hectare. Yeah. <laughs> so so we, 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 we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. But the more we were praying, the crisis was escalating, mm. and we didn't know what else to do. Then the next thing was to start you know, raising funds, getting food and all that to send to them and try to relocate some brethren. And then as it became worse, the terrorists were taking their territory, taking their houses from them, and, okay. they, and they were concentrating on the Christian houses, mm. Christian homes. Christian properties, Christian children, they get 11-year-old child, 9-year-old child, they just marry them off to a terrorist. Mm. So this Christ kept coming to me, and I was a bit hesitant because, one, I just felt, what can I do? I have 700 children. 
I barely can feed them once in a day. And how many adults did you have working for the, with those 700 children at that time? At that time, there were about 40. 40 adults? Yeah, 40, 45, okay. yes. Praise God. So, so um, we, we, we didn't know what to do, but I knew inside of me that I needed to do something. But I felt that it, I was just not having the means. I was, it, everything was just inadequate to care for the 700 and then to do more. And then one day in 2013, early 2013, one of them, a pastor uh, who works as a missionary there also, visited me with a list of 2,000 children mm -hmm. who have been orphaned by Boko Haram. Wow. Their parents are either pastors or church leaders or members of churches, various churches, both Pentecostal churches, Catholic, mm -hmm. Baptist, Methodist, so many churches. And he just brought this list and told me, Pastor, look at this. These children, we've been able to gather them in different places. Mm -hmm. We want to bring them to you. Wow. And I said, yes, I want to help, but these are the issues. Food. Then, no accommodation. We are going to sleep. And then he told me, is it not better for them to sleep out here under the trees than to leave them out there to die? These children are eating grasses. They mm -hmm. eat sand. They just eat anything they find. Wow. While we were talking about that, someone called him and said one of the children in that list has just died of cholera. Her name is Gudia. Wow. I, say, I felt guilty. I felt God. My delay must have caused the death of this child. Mm -hmm. And then, while we were still debating, hesitating, trying to think of what to do, another pastor there sent me a video. And that is the video that made it turn around. Wow. In this video, um, uh, the ch it was a v the, it was the Boko Haram that did the video themselves. Wow. Now, what is, what is, now, Boko Haram is yes. a is a, a word. What what language is it? Boko Haram is is a, a Hausa language in it's Nigeria. A Hausa language. And okay. the meaning is that Western education is forbidden. Okay, so it's, it's against Western education, Western it's education. forbidden. Okay. Which means they don't want anybody to go to school. Wow. Okay. And you know Christians love to go to school. They want to be educated. Right. So they okay. don't want anybody to go to school. And the people who were seemingly going to school in that region were Christians. Okay, so, and, and they've also aligned with ISIS, which is one yes, of the, yes. the major Islamic terrorist yes. groups in, in Syria region yes. that, that we're all reading about. And yes. So you're kind of brought up to who this group is yes. and how barbarous their acts are. Oh, my God. Yeah, so you, you just pray not to meet those people. I've never seen such vicious, barbaric, violent human beings. They have no value for human beings. They just take a woman, a pregnant woman, they tear up the stomach, bring the baby, and just fling the baby away. They take little children, smash their head on the wall. They use stones to smash. In fact, this video, this girl, a daughter of a man of God, they killed the man of God, killed the wife, killed the grandmother, killed the brothers, and all in the family. They took her because they liked her. They wanted to marry her. But how she, old was she? She was, bet was between 16 and 17. Okay. And, and, and she told them, I am not ready to marry you. You better leave me or let me join my parents who are already dead. Mm -hmm. So they did everything. They stabbed her. She refused. So they wanted to kill her in the most wicked manner. They dug a hole and told her to enter. And she went in and they filled it with sand to her neck. And each of them took big, big stones in their hand and smashed her head off. Before they started smashing, she just bowed her head and prayed. When I saw that, I couldn't eat. Everywhere I went, I was seeing this child. When I want to read, I see this child. When I want to sleep, I see this child. When, when I want to to eat food, I see this child, then suddenly I lose appetite. It, the, the, the picture of that child, what I saw was following me everywhere. When I'm sleeping, I dream of her. And then I just feel that those of us in the South, we are just not having trouble. Mm. And, mm. And, and then we don't think of our brethren in the North. Mm. 
you know, we, 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 we most, in most cases, we can feed, go to school, do all the things. Nobody's persecuting us. Right. But here are brethren who are not allowed to go to school. They are not allowed to serve God. They are denied of everything. And yet, with a little faith, the gospel they had, they are holding tenaciously to the Lord. We need to support them from the South. We need to support them from the West. We need to support them from America. Mm. But how can I do this? When I saw this, I felt, okay, if I had opportunity to steal or to take this child away from them mm. and bring them to Benin City where I live, this child will be alive today. There and then we made up our mind. We must do something. But how do we start? Mm. Where will they stay? How many miles away was this? Wow. Hundreds of miles. They up not, right? 1,300 wow. miles or 1,500 miles. Wow. So I want you to picture from Florida all the way to Massachusetts. Mm. That's the distance that these children in the carnage of, of this terrorism, how the it's just like right now, there, there's flooding going on in the nation. There's major traumas happening. And, for some, that is not happening. It's, it's just a far distant thought, but it's very real to those that are experiencing it. And here is Pastor Solomon, over a thousand miles away, having the report of massacres happening. And what happened? How would you get these children? In fact, that was the most difficult part. We had no money, no food, just nothing. And yet, we wanted these children alive. So, we went about almost begging everybody, just begging everybody, help. I emptied all my account, all the savings I had, everything. We were able to get again first for children. Mm. When these children came, they were so lean. You see the instrument big and start to tell us horrible stories. They feared everything afraid of everybody. Mm. When there is a sound, they jump. They so, were so scared. And I have handled children, abused children and all that. I've never handled children from war zone. Mm. Children who have, I have handled children who have been abused, but not children who have seen, I mean, the slaughtering, the murdering of their parents, oh. the raping of their mothers. Oh. So this was a whole new world for me. Mm. Um, then we wanted to be very fast, so we started increasing the numbers. We wanted to get all the 2,000, mm. and then 4, then 12, and then 34, mm. and then we moved to bring 70, mm. and we we're doing this thing quietly. But then when, when the children were coming in more numbers, the security agency saw them. Where are you going to? Who is this pastor mm. that is taking you? Why is he taking you? And I ran into trouble. In fact, most times I was detained, you know, to come tell them why I have to take these children. And then why we've taken about 400, 500, wow. 600, 700, 1,000. They were sleeping everywhere outside. Yeah, you didn't have buildings for them? No buildings for them right. at all. In the cold, in the rain, rain, you know, then how do we feed? That was a big challenge. Wow. Then what do I do with these children? They all want to go to school. Mm. They're happy to go to school. But most of them don't sleep at night because they keep dreaming of these things. Wow. When one is dreaming, seeing everything, he jumps and thinks it's just happening and starts shouting, wow. screaming. Everybody. Then everybody wake up and start running to nowhere. So we turn ourselves mm. to watch nights, mm. stay where they are, when they jump from sleep, they see us, they come down. Wow. One night, I was going around with the security man. I told the women, the widows were sleeping, and I met one widow. She was sobbing. She was weeping. You could see her tears. She was singing songs, money, asking God questions. God, why did you allow this to happen to me? All my sons are killed. My husband killed. My daughter's taken away. God, why did you allow this? I looked at this woman. What will I tell her? I've not seen what she has seen. I took the Bible. She looked at me like, you don't know what you are saying. Mm. I wish you were in my shoes. 
I could understand her. But what would I tell her? And then, I didn't know what to tell her. I tried everything I ever knew. What I studied, how to handle traumatic patients. It didn't work. I sat with her, and while she was just weeping, tears just came down my cheeks. I tried myself, and my team carried her head on my shoulder and then on my lap. And when she saw that I was just shedding tears like her, she began to feel that we were feeling her pain. Mm. And then she started to calm down. And then she began to see that, okay, it's like we are in the same shoes. We now understand why she's crying. From there, I could share the word of God with her and talk to her, pray with her, encourage her. Today, she's all bright, beautiful, smiling, Praise working. Praise God. So this, this is how it all started mm -hmm. and till it became 2000 and then 2002, 2003, 2005, children and widows that are currently living there. Mm -hmm. And then persecution came. Muslims saw and felt, oh, wow, this man is putting them into school. We don't want them to go to school. Mm -hmm. They took me everywhere, took me to the, pal the king's palace took me to the state security service. In fact, I went through a lot. Sometimes I was detained from like in the morning to, to late night without food. But in the midst of all this, God gave us victory. Amen. And then one day everything got finished. When I mean finished, it finished. No water, no money mm. to buy fuel to pump water from the borehole. Mm. All our account was just red. Complete red, zero. Now, I called all the missionaries, that staff, we met, and I said, what do we do now? Let's pray. We prayed. But the children, the young ones, don't understand faith and patience. Wow. You gotta eat. <laughs> so they kept coming to me. They call me daddy. Daddy, we are hungry. Daddy, I need food. Daddy, I need to. This. Daddy, I need water to drink. Daddy... I said, okay, let's trust God. Yes, the, the, the much older ones understand. But the young ones, the little ones don't understand. They were all coming. And I saw their faces. I left the prayer meeting. I, I was just on my own. I knelt down, God, do something. If you don't do something, these children are going to die. Then what difference will it make between when they came here and over there? And then I got up, I sat down, bowed my head. And then somebody was saying, Daddy, look, someone is standing by you. I turned and someone just touched my shoulder. And that was Reverend Laurie, that was mm. your daughter. Yeah, um, yeah. Wow. I stood and, oh, hello, madam. He said, Pastor Solomon, God is with you. God has sent me to you. Wow. And then the children started running around, you know, seeing a white lady. And then she was just hugging them carrying them like their mother. Wow, that was a great encouragement because I have known this family for years, but they don't know me. Mm -hmm. I've read them, read about them, read about Benson Idahos, uh, the archbishop who traveled the world, preaching the gospel, doing signs and wonders. These are people that their life had made impact in my own life. Mm -hmm. I've admired them. I've loved them. I've attended their conferences. Now to see one of them standing by me, standing with me, smiling, telling me, God is with you. Wow, that was the turning point. Wow. And I mm. tell you, sir, from that time, she was everywhere. Mm. Raising fun, bringing food, bringing books. In fact, to building toilets, you know, yeah. you know, doing all kind of things. Sometimes she comes to the kitchen, what did you cook today? You know, at this moment, trauma went away. The children felt loved. In fact, they felt that their lives now is even better than it was before the terrorists came. Because before the terrorists came, they never had education like this. They right. never, they never, they never um, had such love that has been poured in them. And today I want to give thanks to you for having such a daughter. Mm -hmm. Thanks to you, your wife your, is a mother. Your ministry 
Every one of them, they are so lovely people. And every one of you that have contributed mm. to make sure that these children eat, to make sure they go to school, to make sure they have a house, thank you. God bless you. Yeah. You know, Dr. Godwin, who is an educator for his whole life, and I have come over to the, the IDP camp. It was my first time with you. Yes. Now, my wife came over yes, several years ago yes. and met together with you, and she said, Gary, you've got to see these children. And as a ministry, we raised many tens of thousands of dollars, and, mm -hmm. and you gave. You gave. I mean, those of you on Periscope, you gave. Mm. The, the local church gave. People on Jesus Experience gave. Victory Experience gave. On Facebook gave. And, you know, I never had the opportunity to come because I, I had been traveling and doing other things. And this last year, I've been there twice now. Yes. The first time I came with Dr. Godwin, and I, it just captured my heart that we could bring the most significant people on earth that can bring change to deliver, just like it says, that you will repair the waste city, the desolations of many generations, that, that there's a gifted nature in the body of Christ that has a compassion, because those that have compassion make a difference. And that if I could just bring people that could be exposed, that could see, that could experience. They could hear the story, mm -hmm. but they had to see. Pastor Chris took a team of how many went with you? Six of us. Six yeah, went. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we, we, we carry this as, a, as a, a vision for children that have no possibility of a future without the love and care of another person. Mm -hmm. They have no mother. They have no father. They have no family. They do not know when they were born. They mm -hmm. do not know where they came from. They don't have anywhere they call home, and there's only one man they call father. This is Pastor Solomon. And when I, I look into their faces and I see joy hmm. and peace, and we're going to, to share some videos here shortly and, and share with you some of the, the images of, of the lives of these children and how they've been changed. Pastor Chris, you spent time yeah, sharing your heart and ministering. And the women and children praying for them and standing with them and giving and I just we I also took Dr. Marcirillo in to see the the IDP camp last in the last few weeks and the purpose was not for him to see but the world that he sees to see because there are people beyond your life just like there are people beyond my life there are people beyond Pastor Chris's life. There are people beyond your life, just like the children are beyond Pastor Solomon's life. And there are others that will stand in and make a difference. And when we went and saw the, the grace of God that is upon that camp, the, the joy that is in those children, the, the reality that when we give the money for food, the food is in the hands of the children, and they eat. Right. When we give the, in, the knowledge and information for education, the children learn and grow. Mm -hmm. And I just want to take a, a moment in, this, in the middle of this and just say to you that for every one of you that gave, mm -hmm. we just want to thank you because your gift has changed the lives of children that in all practical sense and purpose, would be dead by now. And that your giving is the result of a life now with a future. Your giving is not for floors and sticks and walls and, and windows and glass and cars and gasoline. Your giving is for a child that now has a future, a family that will come into being people that will change because of the, the contribution of your faithfulness and your loving kindness. Online, we have an opportunity for every one of you to sow. I'm asking for you to make this family your family. If your child was starving to death, wouldn't you feed them? If your child was naked, wouldn't you clothe them? 
If your child was not able to read, wouldn't you educate them? These are our children. They belong to us. Now, Dr. Godwin is an educator his entire life. And before we come back, we're going to have a screen up here for just a moment that you can donate to Jesus Experience. And those of you that are using push pay, these gifts today are all going to the IDP, the children that we're going to see survive through the rest of their, their developing life and empower them to do what they could never do with their life. And I'm going to take you to a little excerpt. So I want you to go online right now and donate to Jesus Experience. Dot com. Those of you on Periscope, go to JesusExperience.live. We're on live, and you can interact with us online, mm -hmm. and we're asking for every one of you to participate. But I just want to do just a quick cutaway mm -hmm. for those of you that are on Jesus Experience, Victor Experience, and our Facebook, and meet Dr. Godwin, who is in his 80s, who traveled with me, and his life mission is to bring education at the highest level for children whose lives without it would not have a future. Here's a short excerpt today of our meeting that we just held with people from South Africa, Lagos, Nigeria, Benin, San Diego, Newcastle, Delaware, because this vision has captured the heart of thousands of men and women that are going to raise a standard. There are how many displaced people in Nigeria right now? Yeah, more than three million. More than three million. This camp we can set as a standard to reach an entire nation and make it that which God can do. Here's Dr. Godwin. Let's take a look and see. And those of you online, you'll enjoy this short excerpt of a time that we've had internationally today. Pastor Solomon was with us and we tremendously, tremendously appreciate his life. Go ahead, you can roll that, that segment there, Dr. Godwin. We're excited together. We are having the most awesome time of our life. Dr. Godwin and I just finished a phone call connected with South Africa, with Benin, Nigeria, with Lagos, Nigeria, here with Delaware, and in San, San Diego, Diego with Dr. Marcelo. Yes, what, a great What experience. is it that has brought you to Delaware, that brought you together with Pastor Solomon, gave you such a passion for educating people? What, what's going on in your spirit? It's the idea, the vision of how we can reach young people, adults, in countries uh, across the world uh, with Christ-centered education at a price they can afford in their country, in their uh, language, and in, and in their uh, money system. And there are literally hundreds of millions of people out there who desperately need a better quality of education. And if that quality of education can be combined with the Christ-centered message, it can change not just a moment or a day, it can change an entire lifespan in this life. You know, we think so often about uh, trusting Christ as our Savior so that we can go to heaven and we can avoid damnation. Right. But the fact is, when one trusts Christ, they begin eternal life at that moment. That's right. And if we can change that beginning of their life in this world and change it significantly, uh, there's just no better calling. Nothing gets me up in the morning any more than the thought of being able to change the quality of somebody's life now and in all eternity. You know, we have talked about this as being a, a not just a current objective, but a lifetime heart passion. That is a heart for humanity to see them endowed for education, for employment, so their life can rise, their future can be bright, and their influence can be a broadcast. Now, one thing, 
Dr. Godwin, I found in my life, and that is that the higher up the food chain you are, the louder your voice is heard. Yes, the more influence you have uh, in your family, in your neighborhood, in your community. Uh, people who are unemployable, who are desperately in need of food, who are barely surviving, uh, they may have trusted Christ as their Savior, and, and I hope they have, but their, in turn, their influence is very minimum. But if a person becomes better educated, better qualified, more employable, they become a greater, more influential witness for Christ. Amen. And that's exactly what we're doing with Pastor Solomon from the IDP camp in Benin City, Nigeria, is bringing that educational system that is literally the, the educate to employment world that is for that entire world, educating them for effective life and raising them that would never have the opportunity. That's true. That's never. so true. I mean, never. You know, so often in Western countries, uh, academics tend to brag about how their college can produce a, a graduate who can then go on to another uh, school and perhaps do further graduate study, and, and academics tend to uh, evaluate themselves on how transferable their students are to other academic institutions. What we want to do in Nigeria and Africa across the world is educate people for a better quality of life, educate people for employment, make people a better, more effective witness for Christ. And to that end, uh, that's what gets me up in the morning. That's what brought me up here to Delaware to work with you and to cross the, uh, the big pond and, and work with you in Nigeria. Right. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing in the days ahead. It's changing the quality of life in this life uh, in a Christ-centered way. And you know, your part together with this, Jesus' experience throughout our entire heart for humanity is the the experience that every individual gets, not only receiving Jesus, having his life lived out through them, but being in the environment of trainers that are willing to train, educate, empower, and release into the world God's champions that he raised in resurrection. And we just want to thank God for your life, your participation. Right. And we're going to take just a moment here in a break, and then we're going to come right in with Pastor Solomon sharing about how the IDP camp works. And I just want to thank God for Dr. Godwin's life, his contribution, because yeah. w without what God has invested in him over these years, and just in, I believe it was March 2017, we met for the that first is, time. That's right. It, it was a landmark shift in my perspective and, and walk. And I mean, I've seen a lot of people, I've been a lot of places on earth, and yet making this connection and this relationship has changed my focus to be very clear in the future that in all sincerity in many dimensions was without that clear definition of application and i just want to thank you for that contribution oh pastor it's been my joy it's been my greatest thrill and the last many years this old man is 80 years old i know you don't believe it because i look so young but uh, that's a joke. The, but the truth is that uh, as an 80-year-old, I'm now wired for 220. No longer 110 volts, Pastor. This we're is going. 220. We're, we're energized. We have the vision. Uh, now we have to share that vision with those out there who are, who are listening. And, and we want you to catch the vision. We want you to understand the total difference that a Christ-centered education can make to a young person uh, right now, primarily in Nigeria. Amen. Thank you. We're excited. And here is our next segment with Dr. And we're going to step in with Pastor Solomon. Yeah, these, these which we're talking about, these children that are in the camp that you just saw Dr. Godwin and mm -hmm. I talk about that Pastor Solomon is sharing about these children in this camp are not dumb children. No. They, they are not 
underprivileged. They are not devalued in God's sight. Mm -hmm. They are the, the purpose of the sacrifice of Jesus, mm -hmm. and they are the joy oh that was set before him. Mm. They have, may have met the enemy in a way that we have mm. never dreamed mm. we would ever meet the enemy. Jesus. Mm. They may have seen things our eyes, even in the worst horror films, mm. would just shudder and turn our eyes from. Absolutely. But that became their human and their living experience. Mm. The horrors of demons living in people, just massacring, mm. murdering, and bludgeoning oh people mm. without mercy, without care. And here is precious child that God, God loves mm. that has every faculty to fulfill the highest call of God and all they need is somebody with a heart that just says I'm going to make a difference Amen. Amen. some having compassion mm. making a difference yes, the anointing is only as effective mm. as our actions mm. Mm. the power only transfers through relationships. Mm. When my daughter put her hand on your shoulder, mm. she put my hand on your shoulder. Oh she put all my relationships on your shoulder. Oh she put the world that I know on your shoulder. Mm. She put the business people I know on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. She put all the food sources. She put mm. all the education. She, because she put the transformation mm. of relationship mm. on your shoulder. Mm. And that's what happens tonight as we're together is out of relationship. We bring forth a transformation. We put a transformation of humanity simply out of relationship. I mean, I didn't know Pastor Solomon two and a half years ago. Never heard of him. I knew of the ravages in the north. But because of relationship, mm. he's now part of my family. Mm. Those children, Faye is out buying towels right now by the thousands mm. for these children. Mm. Wow. Amen. She just doesn't know how to get them to Nigeria. So <laughs> we will. we're going to get them yeah, packed in these packed. boxes. We'll ship mm. them we by the them. thousands. Amen. We, mm. You know, Pastor Amen. Solomon, you shared something about the children, how many still sleep. And, and th this just gripped my heart when mm. I when I heard this story, there are 2,400 children in the mm. camp, mm. of which you can see there are many buildings that yeah. have been built now, mm. tents that some of them live in, but mm. how many are still sleeping on the ground without any cover whatsoever? 1,600 to 700. Now, I want you to think of. 1,600 to 700 children not sleeping on a concrete floor that's covered by tile, mm -hmm. but sleeping on a dirt floor mm -hmm. that the humidity comes up through, mm -hmm. that the cold gets into their bones, mm -hmm. that they have no protection day and night from the very floor itself. Mm -hmm. And you can make that difference. You say, what could I do? One person, $10, mm -hmm can put a mat mm -hmm. under one child. Mm -hmm. You say, what would one child do if that was your child? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you want your child up off the dirt? Yes, yes. Say, why? Well, I, I just don't think in those terms. But God does. Amen. We talked about food. Mm -hmm. We talked about the food for a day. Mm -hmm. when when we were there, we saw mangoes and, and bags of rice. But what does it take to feed that number of children and those widows every day? It takes more than $3,000 because feeding 2,534 people to get the mm. food and all the things together. Is, is quite demanding. But what we do, whatever we get, no matter how small, we make sure it goes round. Most times it's not quality food, but right. to get quality food, you have to get such amount. Yes. But 
even when it is le when it's less, we still can make sure somebody put just something small that can keep him or her going. And if you come to think about that number, that's like a, a little bit over a dollar per person a day. Oh, I know. You I know. know? Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah. Well, you could get you can't get anything for a dollar a day to eat. You but know. But they can live mm. per child mm. on one dollar a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what would you do if it was your child and it took one dollar a day to keep your child alive? Mm. What level, what extent, what, what, would you, what, action, what would you do if your child required one dollar a day to live? What would you do? Mm. That's what we're asking you to do right now. Whether it's a dollar, mm. it's a hundred dollars, it's a thousand dollars, we're asking you to do it. Because this is not somebody we're talking about that we don't know. These are children we do know. These are families that are gone. And the family that will come up next will be the child that we care for today. Mm. And I guarantee you, your father will know that pure and undefiled religion, the conviction of walking mm. with God himself, has affected your day. Mm. That you took the ministry vision of Jesus, where you took those that were in such pain and distress and cared for them. The man who does my wife's nails gave five hundred dollars hmm. she brought five hundred u.s dollars from him to the camp and bought medicines hmm. that stood probably four foot high mm -hmm. 15 feet long and four foot deep mm -hmm. and that was only enough for a few days of medication to assist with the children's issues hmm. but everything you do makes a difference. Amen. Jesus' experience does not have employees. We're here to reach people, to give an experience that the power of the sacrifice of Jesus brought us to walk in. And, you know, Pastor Solomon, I, I just believe that for many people's lives, it is a privilege to be in the environment of someone of such compassion. Mm. I, I don't know many people, I do know a few, mm. but I don't know many, who have given their life 24-7, seven days a week, mm. to live singularly for the benefit of people that are not of any relationship or any benefit to them in any way possible. And that's what we're asking you to do. Just like Jesus died for the ungodly, mm. those that were against him, he was sacrificed for them, which was you and me. That same love of God's in us mm -hmm. to give, to touch, to care for. I just, I just pray that tonight, mm. as we took this time together and shared, that somehow God's Spirit touches your heart. Amen. Amen. Brings you to an awareness that there is not just a world, but there's a child with his arms reached out, with his eyes wide open, looking to see. Yes. Do you see? Do you see? Will you reach me? Will you care for me? Mm. Will you touch me? Will you feed me? Mm. Will you clothe me? Will you educate me? Will you give me the future God called me to? Will you care for me? Will you know me? Because God knows me. And that's the grace we have to care for those that care, are cared for by God.
You know, Pastor Chris, we, mm -hmm. we talk about Jesus' experience and how to live a crucified life freed from the worries, burdens, frustrations, difficulties of this yes, life. We do. You think about what Jesus did. He went about doing good. But what he did, he went about doing good. He, he didn't turn a blind eye. Yes. He didn't turn a deaf ear. His heart was ever open to the cry of his children. Mm. And he healed all that were oppressed by mm -hmm. the devil, for God was with him. Mm. That same spirit of God's with us. Amen. We're called to go about and do good. So let your works praise you in the gates. Let the joy of this grace of God manifest in your life. Glory to God. We thank God for your life, Pastor Solomon. Pastor Solomon. Thank you, man of God. Glory to God. Thank you, Pastor Chris. <laughs> Tell our children we say hello, Mariamu, Yakubu. I will do that. <laughs> and all the widows, you know. Thank you. And my God. You know, my friends, as, as you've been with us, many of you for years, there is nothing that compares to the lives that change when you reach out and give. So I just pray for you. I believe God to move you to a dimension of fulfillment like you've never had before. Yeah. Let's just reach out to those that are watching wow. and just thank God for the thank grace, you, Father, for grace and the supernatural abounding oh mercy and compassion. I believe that faith. tonight, even in your distress, mm. when you care for someone who's in a place that's in greater distress than you, My God. God lifts burdens, yes. weights, and oppression off you, for you lift up those that have been downtrodden. Father, we yes. believe you we for you. even those that are in their own My distresses. God. We thank you. God, this day will be the day of delivering them out of their troubles yes. because yes. you're the God who cares for them. Mm. Father, I thank you as we care for others. You Jesus. show the care for us. Just as you said, as we forgive one another, so mm. are we forgiven. As we give unto others, yes. so do men. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running yes. over, give unto us. God, I thank you for thank the, you, the you, giver Jesus. because you give seed to the sower yes. and bread to the eater. Father, yes. I pray for the, the mercy, the compassion, the wisdom, mm. the strength, the, the presence of God yes, to Lord. rule their hearts and minds, yes, mm. to live beyond their circle yes. of love and reach out yes, and God care and increase yes. that circle of love. Yes, we'll ever give you praise, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory now, to God. we've got some things that are coming up and you can stay connected with Pastor Solomon. Pastor Solomon, how can they be involved with you. What website can they go to? We'll put this up online. And what website can they go to to be involved directly? They they can go to your website. JesusExperience.com. Yes, yeah. yes. Amen. I think from there they can connect with us. Amen. Okay. Yes. But they and and on our website we have a whole segment of the, the IDP, IDP camp. camp. Yeah. Right. So you can go and see videos. You can email us. Yes. You want interaction. We have an entire ministry that's run by Clarice here and many that have had passion to serve with these children and we can interact with you and get you the materials to help you reach your sphere of influence because remember power flows through relationship mm -hmm. and one of the relationships you have is one with worship with God. Amen. Tyrone, are we ready to? Yeah. Yes, All right. Uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you on a little journey Pastor Chris, you can stay talking with Pastor right. Solomon here for a minute. Wow. I'm going to take a step out here for a minute. And wow. next Tuesday, <laughs> you are about to experience a webinar that we've never had before. Mm. We're going to bring, in fact, you guys can talk a little bit about this uh, picture behind <laughs> us here, you know, the size of this camp. Yeah. But we are going to bring to bear, and we're going to stay with you on Periscope wow. as we're taking a journey out here to the... Uh, Right out to the auditorium, That's because the on the 9th, on the 9th of September, we have the most incredible worship experience that's about to manifest. Now, I get, get ready. You're stepping out my office. Yep, here you go. Oh, my goodness, they're, they're having a time to get ready for the worship Oh, my father. Now, as, 
as we get ready for this worship experience. We don't want you to miss any of what's about to take place in this worship experience. As we come together in this time of worship on the 9th, you are going to be absolutely transformed. Make sure you don't miss this time of ministry. Now, as we step, we're stepping into a time of worship and transformation that God has ordained for supernatural life. I want you to get ready. Now, next Tuesday night, we're going to have the worship experience. Toby, what's going to happen next Tuesday night? Oh, my God. It's the worship experience 2017. We are getting ready for the mighty move of God. It's going to be totally awesome. I mean, the sick is going to be healed. It's going to be deliverance. And souls are going to be saved. In fact, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It is in the heart of mind what's about to happen here next week Saturday. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, now next Tuesday, yeah. you're, you're going to be on with us, and we're going to have an awesome time Tuesday. What's yeah. happening Tuesday? Oh, we want to talk about what worship means to you. I mean, the experience. It's supposed to be an experience, right? You're having to worship, and that's what we're about to do. You're about to have a foretaste of what's about to happen at the experience, because worship is a lifestyle. We are worship. What we're coming here to do is just offer ourselves up onto God and say, God, this is us. Take us. Here's what we're doing right here on Saturday. Amen. Glory to God. Well, here we are. Right over there. I want you to invite them to come. Right there, I want you to invite them to come next Saturday to the worship experience right here at Victory. Your time. Well, you do not want to miss this. A great opportunity for you to come and experience God's grace, God's presence. It's going to be awesome. We expect great things to happen. We've been working on this, and so we have declared that after you come here, you will not leave here the same way you came because God's going to see that His presence is overshadowing your life, and God's grace is going to be upon you. In Jesus' name, September 9th, you do not want to miss it. Be there. Hallelujah. All right. Glory Thank to God. You. We love you. Love you. We want to connect with you in your Jesus experience. Please visit our website, JesusExperience.com, where you can view our complete teaching archives, enroll in our free school of biblical studies, watch live services with chat, and participate in our live Jesus Experience webinar. You can connect with Jesus Experience on Facebook and Twitter. Or if you prefer, please call us at 1-302-561-6800. Share with us as we share with you.